All right. Good evening, everybody. Uh, my name is Dr. Brett Fusco. For those who don't know me, I am a second generation chiropractor practicing in the Edmonton area. I have two practices that I run right now, um, one of them with my dad and one of them I started up new that's within a uh, multidisciplinary practice, which is really cool because I get to work with a bunch of other professionals. And so I get to I get to see people of all types and kinds and everything like that. But on top of that, I get to really expand not just acute treatment, but really focus on what my passion is. And what my passion is, is um, preventative care, really treating people when they're good and keeping them good and showing them the tools that they can use in their lifestyle to maintain that, that, that function, that, that healthy feeling, which isn't just the absence of disease, but really making sure their bodies are running optimally. Uh, tonight's talk is on omegas. So omegas threes and five, six, sevens, nines, everything, and why they're important for our body. And so let's roll into it. All right, so uh, omegas are something that I've become very passionate about recently. And uh, uh, it's something that I knew about, but I never understood the power until I really stepped into the world and I started practicing, uh, especially when I started practicing and, and practice, where you start running into all types of health problems and all types of issues of, of all different types. And uh, to really try to fine tune the skill set around us to, to really kind of clue into uh, what can help people the most. And like I was saying, omegas are something that I've become really passionate about. And you're going to hear why in a little while of why I'm so passionate about this. Uh, it's just something that really hits fairly close to home for me. In fact, it's really close to home for me. Um, but you're, you'll hear about that in a bit. My goals for tonight are fourfold. Uh, what I really want to do is teach you what omegas are. What are omega fatty acids? What do they do for us? Uh, secondly, I want to talk about why they're important. Thirdly, where do they come from? And lastly, how do we make sure that we get enough? Now, I am going to be stepping into some pretty heavy stuff and maybe taking people back to a hard time in school when it was like, oh, organic chemistry. So if this, uh, you don't have to memorize this stuff. I think I, I made this more advanced strictly because some people are going to get it and they want that information. Other people um, may just not want to hear the information, hear other things. So if you're more advanced, know a little bit, hopefully I can teach you some more. And if you're new, stepping into it, hopefully you pick up some cool things that you can apply to your life or somebody else around you. Um, but like I said, this is not a not something that I, 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 I think you should entirely understand top to bottom. But um, hopefully I can just give you a little bit of value out of it, okay? So here we go. I'm going to start with what are omegas. Hopefully at the end of this, you'll be able to Kind of understand in your head if somebody asks you what is an omega fatty acid you'll be able to get in that so what are omegas omegas are unsaturated fatty acids so we're going to stop we're going to back up a little bit and we're going to go to just what are fatty acids we'll start there okay fatty acids are hydrocarbon chains with the carboxyl end okay so we're going to start with the hydrocarbon part and i know this next image will probably can bring back some pretty bad memories for some people that that struggled in school i know as one of them organic chemistry was tough uh, but this is what a fatty acid is. Now what you see in front of you is this long chain of carbons, especially the top end the image, and it has all these H's or hydrogens attached to it, and then at one end, the far right, you have kind of a few oxygens and an extra hydrogen there. This is what a fatty acid is. But in writing that out, it looks confusing and it's overwhelming and it's way too many H's and C's. So we condense this by what you see below it, and that is the exact same compound. Uh, it's just they have a better way to do it. So each, each one of those little points is a carbon. And that's how we, we kind of do shorthand in, in, in nerd terms in chemistry. Uh, so let's take a little bit deeper look at what this fatty acid is. Now, like I said, each one of these points is a carbon. So you can count them all up if you want to, or just know that there's a whole bunch. Of them. And each one of those carbons has a hydrogen attached. And like I said, at the other side is a little thing we'll talk about in a second. But that's what makes a hydrocarbon chain. Hydro for hydrogen and carbon for carbon. That's all it is. And so we got the hydrocarbon part down, but what about the carboxyl end? The carboxyl, carboxyl end is this little thing right here. And all you need to know is that it has one. That's it, okay? But now things start getting a little bit more difficult. What makes it saturated versus unsaturated? You can see the two compounds, and actually the only difference between the two right now is this little double bond right there. And that double bond is really important because this is what's going to really allow you to figure out, number one, if it's saturated or unsaturated, and then what type of unsaturated fatty acid or omega that it is. So the top one's saturated, bottom one's unsaturated. And like we said, omegas are unsaturated fatty acids. Okay, so we figured that out. We know that it's going to be this, this chain of carbons and this weird little thing on the end of it, 
and it's going to have at least one double bond in it. So that's where we're going with the, the omega. So what are omegas? Omega fatty acids, especially the ones like what makes a difference between a three versus a six or a nine, uh, they get that name or that number according to where the double bond is in the hydrocarbon chain. So let's go back to the one we just looked at. We have all our carbons here. So what we're going to do is we're going to count to the double bond and then go all the way up and it hits nine. So right there, what this is, is <laughs> an omega nine. This is what an omega-9 fatty acid looks like. Now, there can be different versions of it. You can have more than one double bond in there, so you can see other bonds. But where that double, first double bond is, according to one of the ends, is how it gets its name. So let's look at a few more examples. They kind of hit this one home. On the top, on the third carbon, you have a double bond. On the bottom one, on the sixth carbon, you have a double bond. The top one's an omega-3, the bottom is an omega-6. You can see they have other double bonds in there. Another example. Top one has seven, which makes it a seven. Bottom one is a nine, omega nine. There you go, those are your omegas. You've now been completely schooled in what makes an omega an omega. So let's move forward. We're gonna kind of go after this a little bit. Uh, don't worry about this one too much. All I really want you to know is that there are long and short versions of this. We saw a long one before, that's what we're looking at. It was a long chain fatty acid. These ones are much smaller. You have four carbons in the first one, then three, then two, then one. They're pretty small, they don't have to be huge. Um, and these are all short chain. The next ones are long chain. These are gonna be your big boys. And these are gonna be the ones you've probably heard of. For those of you that are familiar with omegas, you've heard of alpha linoleic acid, also known as ALA, or you've heard of acisopentanoic acid, or EPA, and docosahexanoic acid, which is DHA. A lot of us have heard of ALA, DHA, and EPA. In fact, a lot of us, if you've had recommendations, will be you need to be on EPA and DHA. A very common recommendation. But if you look too at what we just educated ourselves on, is that these are all third carbon in omega fatty acids, which means these are all omega-3s, every single one of them. The only difference is how many carbons are in them. 18 for ALA, 20 for EPA, and 22 for DHA. So there you go. So now you know the difference between those two, okay? And these are all long. Like I said, you don't need to memorize this. Just know that there is long and short fatty acids. We're gonna talk about that. So why do we need omegas? Why are they important for us? They make 60% or our brains are 60% fat, okay? Out of that 60%, 15 to 20% of that is made strictly of omega-3s. In fact, oligodendrocytes, which are a supporting cell within your brain, they help uh, provide nutrition to the neurons, they help protect the neurons, uh, they, they help transmit signals with the neurons, they're very, very important. Their main components are omega fatty acids, so they are belligerently important for our brain. On top of that, peripherally, the myelin sheath, which is this little fatty layer overneath our, or over top of our nerves that helps with conduction and movement. I mean, some people have heard about the myelin sheath being eaten away in MS patients. This is what they're made of. In particular, they're made of DHA. So very, very important for the central nervous system and peripheral nervous system. On top of that, the brain needs long chain fatty acids. So this is what I was talking about, knowing the difference between short and long, okay? And a great little thing to memorize is longer the chain, the better for the brain. It's really important. And this is the even more important concept I'm gonna stick on for a little bit here. Uh, we Short chain fatty acids are very numerous. They're pretty much in all different types of food. We get them from animal sources, plant sources. We get them from uh, anything you can think of. So they're very numerous. Now, some people have the ability to take these short chains and build them up into long chains and get in these 18 carbon, 20 carbon ones that we were looking at. And we know that the long ones are going to be better for our brains. Short ones are going to be good for like our skin and our other organs and stuff like that, the liver, but for our brain and our nervous system, we need those long chains. They're a necessity. Um, but only certain parts of the population can convert. And this is very important because let's say you have more of a limited diet the only place you can get these is from your diet let's say you have a limited diet such as maybe you're a vegetarian maybe you are uh, allergic to certain types of food like fish uh, you're not going to be able to get these long chain fatty acids this is going to be very important because then you're going to need to supplement for this now um i don't know the exact numbers on who can and who can't but what i've understood I would say it's pretty close to 50-50 of what I've talked to and what I've looked into. They haven't done any long-term studies on this. You can notice that a lot of this stuff is fairly, um, is fairly, um, 
new for research. They haven't done any long-term studies yet. So um, why do we need omegas? And so let's move on from that, okay? So this is gonna be something I found very interesting. Like I said, you'll understand in a little while why it's so important to me, but high dose omegas are used in the military for brain injury. So the military in the States knows that for those that have had some sort of brain tra trauma or brain injury, a high dose of omega seems to help these, these people recover and give them some of their function back. Omega-3 omega is also help build and strengthen synapses. So this is for everybody. You don't just have to bump your noodle on the ground. This is for literally everybody. Uh, no matter who you are, our synapses are going to get those signals from our body to our brain, from our brain to our body. It's going to make sure that we get all the right connections from all our organs, including our skin, our stomach, our intestines, everything to our brain and vice versa. Really, really important. Pregnant women are also in absolute need of omegas because we are fatheads. It's literally what, I, what we are. And when your woman is pregnant, she's going to be building another brain inside, not just taking care of her own. So omegas not only benefit the mother, but they also benefit the baby. And low levels of fatty acids is linked to postpartum depression, especially omega-3s. And this can be really big for any mother that's been postpartum and dealt, dealt with the, the, the low lows and everything. It's going to be massive to be able to just even those out a little bit. And why else do we need them? Necessity for critical periods of brains developing children. So this is going to be the times where the kids are at their absolute most critical for learning. You've seen kids are like sponges. And you want to give them everything they possibly can to support that growth and that learning. A recent study showed that there was a 690% in breast milk DHA after two months of a DHA supplementation. That is huge. That is a massive jump. The world average is around 0.32. And 0.21 is the average in the United States. Now, I know you're saying, you're probably thinking, like, well, that's the United States. How is it kind of? We're not that far off, guys. We really are not that different from the United States. A lot of similar practices between the two. So what else do omegas do? Omegas help with cell permeability. They, excuse me, um, what they do is they really help with getting, pe or getting things and, and molecules in and out of the cell, which is also made of fatty acids, so very important. Um, it's needed by every cell in the body. I cannot reiterate that. I know I've said it a few different times, but it is definitely, definitely an absolute necessity for pretty much everybody. So where can we find omegas? This is a big one. People are probably understanding by now that they need omegas in, the, in their lives, but where do they get them from? And these are all really good examples of where omegas come in our diets. On uh, the top left, we have flax seed. Next to that is chia seed. Then you have walnut. You have a bunch of different types of vegetable and other types of oils. Eggs are a good source. Marine products such as fish and all the other crustaceans and, and, and mollusks and everything like that uh, are huge, huge for omegas. Uh, and even meat carries some types of, uh, of fatty acids too. We're going to talk about fish a little bit. Like I said, it's an overwhelming amount of omega 3s are found in marine products, like nothing else. And this is really important because marine animals get their omegas from algae. There is a source. We learned in school when uh, the oceans were becoming full of life and everything, actually, one of the biggest ones is cyanobacteria to come up and produce oxygen that us animals need. And one of the, the animals that came after that are not animals, but it was algae. And algae is a massive creator and almost a primary food source for pretty much everything on the planet. All of our life really starts in the ocean and comes out from there. So the source for all of the omegas that we take in comes from algae. But how much do I need? Now, this is a tricky one. This took me a very long time to kind of figure out. Um, there is no official recommendation for the daily dose of omegas. Um, like I said, this is a comparatively new field in nutrition of understanding exactly how omegas, omegas work in our body. But we don't know an, uh, uh, how much is too much. We don't know how people work differently with different types of injuries and stuff like that. Like we don't, we're not too sure about pregnant women. But right now, the kind of, un, an, uh, I guess, agreed upon amount would be anywhere between 250 to 500 milligrams per day of omegas. And this is just omega-3. This isn't even including all the other omegas that I'm going to talk about in a little bit. So what does this mean? What does this look like? I wanted to create some sort of understanding. We could see how much we need to be taking in every day. So just to hit your daily minimum, minimums, you would need five ounces of clams or seven eggs or four ounces of crab or one to two servings of fish, depending on the type, two ounces of mussel, 
have to have one serving of salmon. Now, not all salmon is created equal. Chinook has much higher amounts than Atlantic, than coho, and sockeye is actually one with the least amount of omegas in it. You need six ounces of shrimp per day or any of the combination of the above. So keep, keep in mind that this is an and, this is or. So you could have seven eggs in one day if that was what you wanted to do. Or you could have fish. Now, this is important that this is only EPA and DHA. This is not the other types of omegas that you need, these other long chains like ALA. So this is only one aspect. In order to hit your ALA, this is what you need to also have. One cup of pinto beans, or two cups of black-eyed peas, half a cup of soybeans, half a cup of almonds, one tablespoon of chia seeds, one teaspoon of flax seeds ground up. You need to grind up your seeds. You can't just eat them. You'll just go right through you. Half a cup of hemp seeds or any combination of the above. Now, keep in mind, too, for these last two ones, this isn't just these ones. These are the ones that I found to be the most common out of the thousands upon thousands of foods that were on this list. Uh, so keep in mind, there is a, a diverse thing, but this is showing what you need to be doing pretty much every single day. And once again, those two pages are just making up how much you need for only omega-3s, according to the recommended daily value by um, an online omega source. Uh, I can get the exact website. I can get that if anybody wants to know. So this is where things become very interesting. This is where my job as a chiropractor uh, in order to educate people becomes very powerful because this, this what I just showed you, is actually seemed like not too hard, but now you have to put it with all the other nutritional necessities you need every day, like all the other omegas or your fatty acids that you need, the nine to 13, 13 servings of diverse fruits and vegetables, the two and a half plus liters of water at minimum you need to be taking every day, 30 grams of high quality protein that you need to be getting to properly maintain our bodies. On top of that, you have to get food that's local, wild, fresh, lacking preserved, low to no processing, non-GMO, ethically grown and killed, etc. Like this list starts becoming very difficult. And I remember when I first stepped into nutrition, and I use eggs as the best example. What you first learned about eggs was that eggs were good. And the next thing you learn about, well, cholesterol is bad for you, so the yolks are bad. Don't eat the yolks. And then they found out cholesterol is not that indicative of heart disease or general health in general. And they said, okay, have the yolk, but don't have the protein and the white stuff. That's not good for you. And now that eggs are good. And then I don't know what they're going to be saying next week, right? So this rabbit hole, this, this deep, deep rabbit hole of nutrition becomes very difficult. And this is where people's ability to apply their knowledge becomes individual parts are easy, but altogether it becomes very difficult. And this is where we try to help people in little life hacks and getting them pointing in the right direction and choosing the things that are going to help them but are also easy to establish into your lives. I have two little kids. It's not the easiest to get consistency all the time, but we need to do it no matter what, especially with our little ones. So why supplementation? As it rolls perfectly into it. Uh, fish oil is the most commonly supplemented uh, for omegas, period. Uh, it's, it's the most commonly used. I don't know if anybody ever had it, but if you ever get one of those capsules open up in your throat, uh -huh. or if you even are tough enough to grab one of them and, and just take it in a spoonful, just, I don't know how some of you do it. Uh, it just doesn't do it for me. But uh, as, as good as they are, there are definitely some concerns when it comes to fish oils. And the amounts per capsule can vary widely. There is not a good regulation or regulatory body that follows supplementation in general for all types of supplements. Meaning that people can be putting, or companies can be putting things into these capsules that they do not put in the bottle or vice versa. Now, there is limited research, meaning that, yeah, there's a lot of research on what omegas can do and lack of omegas in certain conditions, but not a lot of research and quality, and like I said before, how much we can put into our bodies every single day. Uh, on top of that, uh, there's a lot of stuff in heavy metals being contaminated in the, in the fish. We've heard about the mercury scare with, with certain fish, because you got to remember, they're getting these from big fish who eat smaller fish, who eat smaller fish, who eat smaller fish, who eat smaller fish, and you can get a compounding effect of contaminants in these fish. So quality is huge. And on top of that, it depends on the type of fish. A cold water fish is what is believed to be some of the best. Uh, there's rare third-party testing or quality control. So I don't even know if these, the type of omega you're getting in your fish oil is getting into your blood or getting into the cell. Um, some people are allergic to fish. They can't take fish oils and they go, well, now what? On top of that, they're very highly processed. It's something I'm going to talk about and expand on a little bit too. Um, but when you process, you take away a little bit of nature every single time you process. And there's always processing levels. And the further you go, the less this becomes food, the more it becomes just an isolated compound. Because when you eat a fish, you're getting thousands upon thousands of different things with it, and your body knows what to do altogether, rather than here's just an omega-3. And like I said, 
we don't know what just an isolated omega will do because we don't completely understand the entire mechanism of how omega is brought into our body when we use it appropriately. We know it's good, but we don't know where this good line stops and the bad starts. So something that I, I'm really looking forward to as this becomes more of a public uh, place of interest that we get more and more answers. So I'm gonna change gears a little bit and I'm gonna talk about why I'm so passionate about omegas and why I continue to kind of focus on this area. And there may be some nurses on the call here, some doctors, and they may recognize that image on the left. Now the image on the left, that is another one that's not me. I didn't have pictures of this. I, I was not the right time for that. Um, but this is called battle sign. Now battle sign occurs when you have something called a basal skull fracture, which is a fracture down the back part of the skull on the lateral side here. Now, I unfortunately suffered one of these back in 2003 uh, within a car accident where I smashed my head in the ground very hard. I actually had two skull fractures. I had one at the side of my head and one at the back, which caused this. Now, um, the majority of people that suffer a basal skull fracture not only could have very bad life-changing damage done to their brain, but a lot of them don't survive because this attacks and will shut down the breathing and heart centers. Now, I got lucky. I survived through the night, um, very horrible. I, I kind of made it through that, but I did have a fair amount of scar tissue in my brain and in coming out of it, um, I became a different person overnight. And it's not something I talk about very often. In fact, this part of my story of my health is something that I actually did never shared until only a, about a month ago. Um, and it's something I, 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 for this exact reason, the omegas, I've become very, very involved with. And the reason being is that if I knew the stuff that I just said, Back then, I know that my, my health transition would have been significantly easier. So this is why this information is so important that as many people know about it to help others like myself. Maybe not that bad, but for the average person too, it can be a big game changer. Uh, but either way, uh, what I got to go on, and this was something I, I, I'm really excited about coming out, is I get to talk about the Juice Plus and Mega Blend that's coming out. I, as one of the um, people within this company, I was actually sent this, and as a doctor, I got this stuff as a test trial when it was just these weird little white bottles, and I got to try it. And before pretty much anybody else did, just a select crew from, from Juice Plus. And I was really, really excited about it because I've never gone on anything like it before. I didn't know enough about it. So when I went on it, I had a bit of a transition. I had about three months of, I wasn't figuring out what was going on. But right after that, or not three months, three weeks, and right after that three week period, I started noticing improvements. I started noticing things that I was deficient in, like my mood swings and my memory issues and my ability to concentrate and my frustration and everything like that really started to turn around. And I told Sarah that basically they created a monster in my wife is because I was becoming so focused and so clear what I was doing. I'd never felt that in a very long time. And uh, unfortunately, I had to give mine up to Sarah because Sarah was pregnant at the time, so I had to give it to her. Uh, because it was more important for her, but I'm really excited moving forward here to uh, to get back on it as it comes out uh, pretty pretty quick here. Um, but what makes it unique is what I'm even more excited about. Um, the company focuses a lot on plant products, and that's what I really like. So this is a 100% plant sourced omega supplement. It cuts out the middle fish, okay? And what they have in it is algal oil, pomegranate seed oil, sea buckthorn berry oil raspberry seed oil, safflower oil, seed oil, tomato seed oil. Now, why this is important is the first bit in there. I mentioned it a little bit, is the algal oil. And now, this is really big because they use microalgae for it. And what microalgae has, unlike any other type of plant-based omega supplement, is it has all the long-chain fatty acids that the other plant sources do not remember. A lot of people that will take a strictly plant-based omega may not be able to convert those smaller chains into the big ones that they need. So this is huge, and this is something that Canada has never seen. And in fact, why this is taking so long to come out is because Canada has never seen it before. They don't know what to do with a plant-based omega. And they're going through all these different laws and everything to try to figure it out and try to get it done right, uh, which I'm okay. I'd rather wait for it and come out right than try to push it and have some mistakes made. So I'm 100% okay with that. We're also very excited about is this includes omegas three, five, six, seven, and nine. Now, a lot of people would ask, well, why do you need sixes and nines? They're pretty common in our diet. And the reason being is because the company chose to do less processing. Like I said, every time you process something, it becomes less and less like food and more and more like a, like just an ingredient. Okay. 
and this is full spectrum stuff. So it comes in the ratios that are found in nature, which is huge because our body knows what to do with nature. And this is really important. Once again, um, you don't have to know this stuff, but um, it is always recommended that you have a two to one omega three to nine. And that's exactly what the, uh, the juice plus essential oil has on top of that. It is not recommended that you get a supplement of omegas that has any less than 1 to a 1.2 EPA to DHA ratio, and Juice Plus has a 1 to a 1.75 EPA to DHA, which is huge. So it's even better than the recommended. recommended. In fact, most of them sit around the 1.2 to 1.3. I've seen a few 1.5, but I've never seen one at 1.75, especially a plant-based one. So this is, once again, extremely unique on the market, and it covers everything. On top of that, like I was talking about, we need more research. So they're actually launching, um, it's already under, underway right now, but they're doing research on the Juice Plus Essential product to figure out exactly the micronutrient profile as it hits a person, person's body. They're going to check for bioavailability of major compounds. They're going to be looking at bioefficacy, in fact, they'll let the metabolism. How does it change the body for the better? They want to know these exact facts. They want to learn more. And these are all happening right now. This is what's for 2017 to 2019 as of a few months ago so they might even have bigger stuff moving forward so um, it, it's it's truly an all-encompassing thing that I'm really excited about but to kind of end this uh, who needs omegas in my honest opinion every single person on the planet needs omegas uh, we, we try as hard as we can our lifestyles have changed from a much more relaxed to a faster pace and we're, we're always wanting a quicker fix and I, I truly believe that uh, for those of you looking at consistency and really building something into your life that can make a, a long-term change, uh, then this is definitely something to look into. Um, but no, it's something uh, um, I'm very passionate about, as you can probably tell. Um, on top of that, uh, the last thing I want to always touch on is my, my favorite way to end every health talk that I do, and it's that there are two types of people out there. Uh, there are the people that see something and they, they see a hole in their lifestyle and they go, you know what, I can change that, I'm going to change that, and they do that. We love those people. The second type of people are the people that wait for something bad to happen to themselves or somebody around you. Now, I had my open one in uh, 2003. I, it wasn't really my choice. If I would do it all over again, I would never have that happen. But uh, mine woke me up at that point, and I was very lucky that it happened at a young age. Unfortunately, um, in health, we're not always given a second chance. So I always try to get people to make changes as soon as they possibly can and to make a difference in theirs and they're the people that have lifestyles around them that they absolutely love because we want to see you live a higher quality of life, not just get old, but get old healthy, right? You want to be the person that's in your 70s and up and around keeping up before you were in the 60s or you want to be sitting in a wheelchair type of thing, right? So I hope uh, everybody enjoyed my talk here. Like I said, this will be posted online and I'm going to stop recording.